a young couple, Catherine and Michael, have accepted a lucrative offer to participate in an experiment. All that is required of the participants is to spend 50 days together in the same room. The prize will be the sum of $5 million, which Michael discusses with great enthusiasm. What will be spent on? The girl doubts that it is all for the truth, because the conditions are too simple and the reward is too great. Michael and Catherine assure that they are just lucky. Sometimes it happens, and you just have to relax and get high. There is nothing in the room but a bed. A shower which, as it turns out, is designed for one person at a time and control modules through which they can learn about the rules of staying in the room and get specially designed food. The lights turn off automatically at 10 o'clock. Kay also sets her alarm clock for 7 o'clock in the morning. All these conditions seem like a mere trifle to the couple because the reward more than covers all the inconveniences. The next day they do not turn in all their clothes and in return they receive other clothes to which Michael says that now they look like mental patients. Catherine wonders what he's doing all this for. He is a certain warrior professor who is the founder of this project. As Michael tells her, earlier this same professor found some unremarkable middle American family. Dad was a pastor, mom was a baker, the kids went to the only school in town. And then he spent $150 million to see what would happen if he made them famous like the Kardashians. The professor did everything for them, Hollywood PR people, stylists, any whim for his money. At first everything worked. The kids got important modeling contracts, dad starred in sitcoms, commercials, and TV series, and mom became a factory manager. But then she shot him when she found him in bed with another woman and went to prison for murder. The son went missing and the daughter died of an overdose of some nasty stuff. It's been almost two days. Michael starts to say that he hates the clock, that it's like it's gone backwards. He's starting to feel like the seconds are longer than usual, about 1.3 tenths longer than normal seconds. 50 days could end up being about three months. To which Catherine says that before the second day it is even over, conspiracy theories are already being floated. You just have to relax and don't look at the clock too long. Looking at the clock, the morning alarm clock, which Kate has set and which cannot be turned off, is beginning to annoy Michael to no end. However, he has no choice. A day passes. Genetically modified food. Spotless room. Nothing changes. Day, food. White room. Day-night room. Food. Nothing changes. Room. And nothing. Suddenly, Michael finds a bug. A seemingly ordinary bug but what could be better in a room with nothing? Michael decides to feed it. A voice says the food is for members only, realizing he shouldn't do that. At one point, the guy says he needs to let it outside. Michael starts telling the camera that he's not going to leave the room. He's just going to open the door and let the bug out. Kate says that's not a good idea. Suddenly, Michael starts telling his girlfriend that compassion has never been her strong suit and the couple starts fighting. Catherine says that Michael is only vegan because he wants to prove something to someone. Michael argues with her and tells her that it is possible to exist perfectly well in this world and eat nothing without killing anyone. The girl absolutely disagrees, telling the guy that his problem is that his father gave him too much, which is where his dumb art that he does comes from. As a result, the pair fight and Catherine accidentally steps on a bug. Time passes, however, not as quickly as they would like. Michael tells his girlfriend that he has decided to take the entertainment. He read in the rules that everyone can take two, however, it will cost $100,000 of the prize money. Next, we see Michael getting a green crayon as entertainment while donating the amount of 100,000, to which Catherine says that this amount is deducted from Michael's share. After receiving the crayon, the guy eagerly takes up the task and begins to paint all the walls of the white room. At one point, Catherine asks him to draw. Michael offers to draw her image with an artist's eye, but the girl wants a natural portrait. As a result, Catherine says that Michael is simply incapable of drawing her naturally and engages in nonsense, which again offends her boyfriend. 
After the crayon runs out, boredom sets in again. Kate realizes that she was overreacting, apologizes for acting like the ultimate jerk. Things start to heat up after Catherine finds a loaded gun in the bathroom and starts saying that they're just being bullied, while implying that they'll have to use it sooner or later. Eventually, unable to figure out how to get rid of the gun, they throw it under the bed. The next day, Michael unexpectedly receives a video message from his sister, in which his sister says a lot of unnecessary things to the guy, laughs at the fact that Michael decided to drag himself into that room, and says that he rather did the right thing by deciding to distract himself from Kate that way. Immediately afterward, Michael receives his own message from Kate, from a certain older man. The girl reacts extremely negatively and says that she doesn't want to hear it. The elderly man tells her that he is in a nursing home, that he is doing fine, and starts singing a children's song and tells her that he loves Kitty very much. The next day, the girl admits that she lied to Michael about her father. She is ashamed of him, and for good reason. As it turns out, Key's father drank through their house, redeeming the money for school fees, and deprived the girl of the opportunity to grow up to be a normal person. Catherine is depressed about the situation with her father, and Michael is almost going crazy with idleness. Trying to cheer Kate up gets her nowhere, and at one point Michael says that he feels like he can't handle it. Catherine becomes worried that Michael will give up, and tells him to take the second entertainment, which will cost a quarter of a million, and this entertainment is a naked girl. And here's where the fun begins. When Catherine comes out of the shower, she sees a fully naked girl, and Michael starts to make excuses, even though he's not guilty of anything. The girl introduces herself by the name Simone, and tells him that she wasn't aware of the spotless room. The agent had scouted her for the job, and one of the conditions in the contract was full nudity. Catherine begins to have a strong jealousy. She sees that Michael, although he does not show it, but pays a lot of attention to the other. The situation is aggravated by the fact that the new guest has nowhere to sleep. The guy says that he will lie on the floor, and the girls will sleep together. But Simone says that this is nonsense, because the floor is concrete. In the morning, Catherine is glad that the girl has left the room. However, she meets her in the shower. The whole sad jealousy situation continues until Kate says she wants to have some fun, and the room slips them some pills, after which they get down on themselves. All the thrash happens until Michael completely passes out. He sees a drowning child he can't save. Michael regains consciousness, and Catherine comforts him, while telling him it's just a flashback. Next we learn that the child he is seeing is Michael's little brother. He was asked to look after him while his parents were away. As a result, the child fell into the pool. Michael dived after him, however. He did not manage to save him. Having come to his senses, the guy gets into a conversation with Simone. He begins to share his experiences with her and tells her that the loss of his brother was a great psychological trauma for him. The girl tells him about how she lost her mother, that many people face such difficulties in life and experience the loss of their loved ones. At that moment, Catherine wakes up. She catches them holding hands and becomes jealous again. The girl begins to insult Simone, and eventually the other, to spite Kate, says that there may have been something between them. The next day, Catherine doesn't find Simone, and is finally happy that something has left the room, but then discovers the writing on the wall. I've never had such awesome intimacy with a man. Michael immediately starts saying that's nonsense, and that he didn't sleep with her. Kate says that Simone looks like his ex, and no wonder he's cooing so sweetly with her. Michael and explain that it's all the room, the organizers are toying with her and trying to get her emotional, to which Catherine replies that there are no emotions, he's the one who slept with Simone, making him jealous in the process. Completely losing her mind, Kate pushes Michael, and he hits his head against the corner of the wall. The girl immediately rushes to him, and apologizes that she didn't mean it, and that it came out accidentally. Michael begins to tell her that he never gave a reason to be jealous. He gave up everything for her, stopped socializing with his rich friends, 
and in return he received only reproaches and jealousy. After Michael starts saying he needs medical attention, Catherine tries to explain that they don't have that option. If he leaves the room, that's when it's over. After hearing this, Michael asks a key question, asking her how far she's willing to go. Would she let him bleed out if he passed out? He tells Kate that she's completely lost her head over money, but the girl denies it. Michael then offers to leave the room together. However, we see that Kate is more determined to get the money than give Michael medical attention. He tells her that it's not a room, it's a mirror. Professor Warrior built the whole thing to show them and test their morals and spirituality, and they fail that test. Money can't help them anymore, and they need to get out of here. After Michael tries to leave, Kate grabs a gun and threatens her boyfriend that she will shoot him, to which Michael says that he doesn't believe Kate is capable of that, and eventually Catherine decides to only shoot the ceiling and Michael, realizing his girlfriend's full nature, leaves the room. Next we see how day after day continues to be alone in hopes of getting the rest of the money. On the clock, we see that there are two days left, and Catherine heads for the button. A short time later, Michael meets his now ex-girlfriend, Kate, on a jog. He tells her that they haven't seen each other in a while and suggests that she go for a walk. Michael asks if she ended up getting paid to participate in the spotless room, but Kate doesn't answer his question. At the end, we are shown a sign on the building Catherine walked out of thanking her for the anonymous donation, which hints to us that the girl didn't walk out of the room after all while receiving the rest of the prize money. You've been on the Recap Roman channel. Subscribe and give it a like so you don't miss new retellings.